Hey guys, this is Cornelis with uh, Plug Together, and today I'm going to explain you something about uh, use of uh, virtual local area networks, better known as VLANs. Uh, made in beautiful diagram as usual, and um, you have the hosts here, and you have the switches here. Okay, this is one switch, this is two switch, and this is number three switch. They're interconnected here with an uplink uh, uplink cable, so they're all able to talk and these are the PC hosts they may not look like computers but they really are okay now this is the scenario we have all the SQL server and file server so everybody's on the same network right um, as it is um, is there any problem you guys can think of you think oh, this is just fine well it works but it's far from optimum let me tell you why. We have these hosts here. Um, uh, for instance, like uh, this host, host number five, right? Host number five is accessing the file server. That's all it needs. This guy is only browsing those files. He doesn't have anything to do with SQL, but he's still in the same network. Um, there's another one here, number seven. And same thing, he only accessing file server, uh, doesn't need to d have anything to do with SQL server. Then likewise we have users here, number two, and number three, and only accessing SQL server. Um, the problem here is security, that's one thing. Because since they're all on the same network, they can easily access uh, the SQL server, right? Um, now you can of course set permissions on SQL and blah blah blah. Um, so it won't get hacked, but there, there's a better way of doing it. And this is where VLANs are coming in. What you can do, you can create a physical boundary between uh, the file server people and the SQL server people by creating VLANs. And this is where it's all about. So let's say we have this file server group. And if we put those guys in the same group, which we configure on the switches, Right in a VLAN file server, they won't be able to access anything else but only the host assigned to the same VLAN, um, which, of course, is uh, an, an, a really good solution. Uh, in order to prevent um, people accessing sensitive information on SQL, uh, SQL Server. Uh, likewise, you can create a VLAN for the SQL people. Oh. And you call it VLAN SQL. So as it is, you have a physical boundary configured in the switches, right? Um, So sorry. So one VLAN it won't be able to communicate with the other one. Um, you can do either same thing. We have another switch here. Actually, you have all switches covered, so that's fine. But you might have another host here. This is host number nine, right? Which is also part of the VLAN SQL. And see what's happening now. We have like an, an VLAN. We have uh, a VLAN here SQL, a VLAN here SQL they're actually able to communicate with each other over these these links uh, keep in mind though you have to configure these links as trunks okay switches really need to need to know um, how to uh, direct redirect uh, VLAN traffic um, to other to other VLANs since all packets are actually tagged all right, so as it is, um, you have these two separate groups, and you might think, yeah, but you know what, maybe some people need to access SQL and some don't. Well, this is, this is where a router comes in, and that's the fun of, an, of a layer 3 device, where you can create an access, an, an access list, an ACL, where you can actually block some host based on a P address or physical or, or you name it. 
um, you say like, well, this guy, number five, I, I five, I want to block him from accessing SQL. You can do it on that router, okay? Now the other, the other big reason for using VLANs or broadcast, is broadcast traffic. Now in this, this setup, it's probably not such a big of an issue. We have three switches. We have only ten hosts, so the traffic probably is not too bad. But imagine you have hundreds. Or, or 200 or 300 hosts all on the same network, well, that kind of is going to definitely going to create problems. Um, they're going to create a lot of broadcast traffic, and, um, and therefore, in VLAN is an, an extremely helpful tool to break up these broadcast domains. So, uh, uh, there are several reasons, resume that there are several reasons for creating uh, VLANs. One is the security. Security. And the other one is uh, eliminating broadcast traffic. These are the, the, the a few main reasons for creating VLANs. So in order to make it happen, um, we'll talk a little bit about the router. This is not an, an, a normal router configuration. This is what we call a router on a stick because you only have one cable attached to the router that goes only to one switch. And the way it configured is with uh, on the router is with sub interfaces. And um, therefore you configure sub interfaces assigned. So every sub interface is assigned to these VLAN using ISL or dot one q encapsulation. Sounds all complex. Um, the configuration, I'm not going to dig into the configuration here. This is just the basic basic idea of, of what a VLAN is. To give you an idea, and, and uh, the there's more to the configuration and the commands. So I'm not going to cover that too in, this, uh, in this slide. We'll, I might cover that later. Um, the other thing you want to keep in mind is when it comes to VLANs, every VLAN needs to have its own subnet. Okay, you, you won't be able to have one big subnet or one big net for all VLANs. After all, that's what a router is about. I mean, you cannot have the same subnet on this part and on this part. A router won't like it anyway, but, and it's a layer 3 device. It's actually uh, routing traffic based on IPs. So um, what you can do is you can assign the, the VLAN uh, SQL, oh, SQL with uh, VLAN number or not the VLAN number IP address block 1.0. What am I doing? 168.1.0 with. Um, This is not 224. 28, I mean. 28, so let's make it like 27 bits. 27 bits um, give you a subnet mask of 224. Uh, I can, may as well make it easier for you. Um, this is like a range of 0 to 32. Okay, and the other one goes then, no, that's also not right, 30. And then the other one goes to 33, 32, to 62. Okay, so each block has approximately 30 addresses to assign to. Then the gateway you configure with, um, with any IP address in that block. So if that's, um, start with number one, you can given maybe the last one, number 30, that's quite common. Uh, yeah, and then you want to make sure that you configure these hosts with, uh, with the gateway address of that router. Now here you're thinking, what if they need to access the web? Well, that's not a problem at all. They, their gateway is, is right here, right? That's the gateway. And the router just routes everything beautiful to the web. So the main reason again for using a router is to block broadcast 
and um, provide security. Okay, that's it for today um, regarding VLANs. I hope this video was informative for you, and I'll see you next time.